So a company called RevoPoint sent me their POP 3D scanner. So I'm going to check it out and see what it can do, what it can't do, its limitations, and what I can actually use it for. So let's get started. Let's check out what all comes in this box. So right on top is your quick start guide along with your user's manual. There's this small tripod as well that also doubles as something to hold it for handheld mode. And I'm surprised to find that it only has two wires. But here's the important part, which is the actual 3D scanner. And my first impression of this so far is it is extremely light and small, which should actually be a good thing since you can use this in a handheld mode and it won't be a lot of weight to move around for a long time. And the last thing in the box is this sticky material to help keep whatever you're scanning from moving or falling over. Putting the parts together are pretty easy. You just screw the tripod into the bottom of your scanner and you're pretty much good to go besides plugging in the wire. It also comes with this like plaster bust so you can have something to scan and test it out. I happen to have the starter set so it comes with a turntable as well as some other parts. And the turntable has its own power supply that just constantly keeps it spinning with a variety of different plug options. The other part that the starter kit comes with is the phone holder so you can use your phone in line with the scanner. And no matter what kit you get you will get these markers and a basically black trash bag to black out your background. The markers are used to stick onto things that normally wouldn't scan properly or don't have enough details. When it comes to the wires and plugs, you have two options. You can use the USB Type-C or you can use USB Type-A, which is 3.0, so you'll need a 3.0 port on your computer. Sadly, you can't just plug this directly into your phone and use it without an adapter because it needs power to power the actual unit. You can still use it with your phone over Wi-Fi though. You do need to plug it in using the wire into a power bank to power the scanner. And you have to set up a mobile hotspot on your phone and all the instructions to do this are in the manuals. If you don't already have this stuff or you don't want to source it, you can get their advanced kit and it comes with everything you would need to do this, along with the adapter to just plug it in. I'm just going to be using my laptop and connect it using the cable. And there we go, here's everything all set up and ready to start scanning. So with everything in frame and my software set up, I'm going to just scan for features and then push play basically, and it'll start scanning the object. As you can see, it's scanning a like blue and green. The green is the newly scanned areas and the blue is the already scanned parts. And these are basically just all individual little points that it's capturing and putting where they need to be. You might also notice that I'm not getting the whole top half of the head or the bottom part. So after a rotation, I'm going to pause this and move my camera angle. And once I've moved it to the new area, I could restart it again and you'll notice that it's gonna come up red and saying mistracking and then it finds where everything is based on its previous information. This doesn't always work perfectly, but this time it did. So with that scan done, I need to do the bottom. So I can lay this completely down and scan it that way. With all that done and to my liking, I can push stop and complete. This will start the point cloud fusing and you'll see the progress bar go across. It's basically making it into pretty much a solid object. And with that done, I can now move it around and look at the model that it's made. It looks like it lost a lot of detail, but we're going to print it out and see what happens. So I'm just going to export this and throw it into the printer. As for the printer I'm using, I'm using the Flash Forge Adventure 4, and I made an entire video on this printer. If you're interested, I'll have a link somewhere. But it looks like it printed successfully, and it only took about nine and a half hours. I just need to remove it from the build plate and clean up all the supports, and I'll be back. And there we go, all cleaned up and side by side. But you can also see that it's lacking a lot of details in the 3D printed one. You might also notice that the scanned or printed one is shorter. And this is because I had to cut some of the base off to print it flat because the scan came up a little weird on the bottom. But their proportions and sizings are pretty much spot on. It's just all the small details that are missing. This is also one of the like best case scenarios for something to scan. Seeing that it's all white and a matte color, it makes it really easy for the scanner to actually pick everything up. But now I'm going to try a 3D printed miniature and see if that will scan or if it's just too small. I also painted this with a flat gray paint to get the best results possible or give me the best chances to get everything scanned. Starting off the scan, it looked like everything was going to work pretty good, and then it just lost all tracking and couldn't find anything. I've done this multiple times too with this piece and moved it closer, farther, just nothing would work on this size. And also this time around, it crashed the entire program. 
So let's move on to the next thing, which happens to be this monster skull that I made out of clay a long time ago. And as you can see, it is white with a matte texture. And I'm using some of that blue tack to hold it up so I can actually scan all the way around it. And you might have also noticed in previous scans, the bed isn't showing up. And that's because this scanner can't pick up black. Well, that's not 100% true. There is a setting in this that you can turn on that will pick up black. But if you do this on the turntable with whatever's on there, your turntable will be part of the image and you're gonna to have to go in and edit all of it out. But anyways, the skull is done scanning and it looks like it did a pretty good job. And I'm gonna use a feature that will actually close up the holes because there are gaps in this and it didn't scan the under part of like where a jaw would be. So it's going to just guess and fill that in now. And there we go, it filled in everything that was missing. The scan didn't capture all the lines and scratches and cracks in this, but it has the general shape of everything, and everything should be in the right place. And if I really wanted to, I could make more things out of clay, and then 3D scan them, bring them into the computer, and then modify them in a 3D program. Oh, and remember those little markers I showed at the beginning of this video? Well, you can use those on large objects, or just things that wouldn't scan well, like a car. So if you needed the body shape or something so you can modify it and make your own custom parts for it, you could do it this way. And if you're going to be doing that, you're going to have to know how to use a 3D program like Blender or Fusion 360 to actually use these files to make your new parts. And that's perfect for the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. So I thought Skillshare would be a fitting sponsor for my channel. Seeing that you come here to learn stuff and Skillshare is a community for learning. And just like with my videos, you can learn at your own pace. And one of the things I really like about it is every class is project oriented. So you're working towards a goal and not just learning random skills. So you'll actually have something by the end of it. So if you are wanting to start out learning some stuff about Fusion 360, I suggest Kevin Kennedy. He has a three part class that takes you from installing the program to getting just about all of the basics down. Also be sure to check out Vladimir Miriano. He has a bunch of classes on 3D printing and how to think in the terms of actually printing out objects, along with teaching you how to use Fusion 360 as well. The first 1,000 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. This gives you full access to the entire catalog that Skillshare has to offer. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So I wanted to show an example of using the dark slash hair mode on this drill that is red and black. So check out what happens when I try to scan this. As you can see, it's not picking up everything like it should be, and then it starts picking up the bed and then gets completely out of alignment because it has no idea what's going on. So like I said, black or just dark objects are not the best thing to scan. Also, reflective, clear, or just shiny things. But luckily, there is a spray that you can spray on whatever you're needing to scan, and as it dries, it will turn to a matte white. And then you can wash it off with water. I do have something a little more complex that I would like to scan and see what happens, and it's my fully built monster. This has a lot of small details and parts to it, along with thinner pieces and thicker pieces. So I thought it'd be a perfect thing to see what it can do and what it can pick up, and how well it can actually repair it and see if it looks anything like the original. So from the looks of it, it did a really good job at scanning this, and I had to move the position a couple times just to get all of it in frame and make sure everything was going to come up. But I pretty much have the general shape of everything. And due to it having so many holes through it and not being able to scan the inside of like the rib cage, I'm just going to tell it to fill holes and see what happens. So it filled all the holes, but it also filled in the entire rib cage into one solid block and the entire pelvis as well. And if you look at the bottom of the feet, they're kind of like concaved and weird looking, but this is what I pretty much expected to happen. But yeah, if I actually wanted to use this for anything, I would have to go into a modeling software and clean it all up and fix it. And surprisingly, it's actually really good at scanning stuffed animals. And this is a toy from one of my dogs, and it's able to scan the main body of it really well. The fluffy tail part, not so much, but the rest of it, really good. 
So as you can see, the scanner does work and it does scan things, but it doesn't do a perfect job and it has its limitations. I'm probably going to end up using it for prototyping and just scanning things that I need to make stuff for to go onto them so I have the perfect angles and I don't have to guess at them. And when it comes to jewelry making, I could technically make something out of clay that is much bigger, scan it, put it in the computer, 3D print it, it's much smaller, and then cast it. But anyways, if you're interested in one of these, you can find it on their website. I'll have links to everything in the description below. And they also have a new one coming out that is still on early bird ordering or their Kickstarter campaign that looks like it does a better job scanning smaller details, but it's not released yet. So that's going to be completely up to you. Oh, and if you stuck around this long through the whole video, thanks. And they also gave me a discount code to give out. It'll be in the description. And it's only good for two weeks of posting this video. So use it if you can. And if not, I'm sorry. I can't control how long it's up for. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.